guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Blake and Blake Sports or the Sports Web, whatever you want to call it. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Cabell, Derek Jones in the building. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Going on, man. Chilling. All right. Hey, man. And also, we've got the new kid on the block here. Uh, of course, his announcement, uh, Mr. Rep. Matthew of 102.5 The Bone hosting last night. Welcome to the uh, Sports Web, buddy. How you doing? Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. No, uh, There you go. So we've got a full deck. So we'll definitely talk with you about what you want to talk about. If it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if it's the Tampa Bay Rays, I think a lot of people want to still talk about the McCoy situation and the Sioux situation and going forward with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So definitely want to get your thoughts. But before we do that, let's go to the big time announcement here. A podcast coming to Bucks Report. Here we go. What is going on, Bucks fans? This is Rhett from the Cannon Fire Podcast, and I'm very excited to bring you some news today regarding the future of the show. As you may know, we here at CFP always strive to bring you some of the best content possible. With that being said, we're very excited to announce that starting today, we are teaming up and will officially be hosted on BucksReport.com. Bucks Report is the number one fan favorite site for all things Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So now, CFP will be available as a part of their catalog of shows. A lot of great things going on there, especially the sports web with Peter Blake, which you may be familiar with. We will now be added to that catalog and hosted on their website. Now, nothing will be changing on our end. CFP will still be available on YouTube and all of our other sources, but we will now be a part of that great selection of shows over at BucksReport.com. So alongside that, we have another announcement as well. It is Memorial Day weekend, so there will be no show from us this week. Evan and I will be taking the week off to enjoy the holiday. But make sure you guys do the same thing and be back here this time next week for some brand new CFP action. Also, stay tuned on BucksReport.com. Things will be uploaded there. And make sure you check them out for the rest of your off-season news. With all of that being said, I am Red from CFP. Have a great Memorial Day weekend, and go Bucks. So there you go. Welcome back to the Sports Web, the evolution of Sports Talk Television. I got to get you on here being the new kid on the block. You know, what is this podcast? Tell the fans out there, the 61,000 following, what you're going to bring to the table here, Mr. Absolutely, Brett. man. So the Cannon Fire podcast from day one has just, it's been a passion project for myself and my buddy Evan, who I do the show with. It's its just a couple of guys talking their opinions on the Bucks, And at the end of the day, you know, we are just fans, and we love this just as much as everyone else does. So we want to bring, not necessarily a, neat, a unique opinion, but just another opinion to the table and uh, something else for people to think about. So it's mm-hmm. it, we try to have a really, really good time doing it, and it's very fan-driven. Well, you know, and, and this is what we talk about, the evolution of sports talk television. We give you a fan voice, and he kind of... Trying to you know, trying to steal something from me, giving you something to think about. That's what we say here on the sports web and on Bla- it Blake. And- oh, I know, I, I know, buddy, I know. Welcome, welcome to the family here, Derek Jones, right there in the back. It's been a long time since uh, we got you on camera. What's going on with you, buddy? Nothing much, man. You know, just chilling out here. Great Saturday afternoon, and uh, you know, today coming down here, I just figured, you know, it's a nice day. I'm not going to drive. I'm going to jump on my bicycle. Hey, all right. And, uh, I'm going to come up on my bike. So I got my bike sitting over here, and uh, it was a nice ride. took a little while, but you know, I'm used to it. I usually ride my bike back and forth sometimes from where I'm at to the, which we see now is going on down there is the new pier. Mm-hmm. So sure. uh, it's looking nice, though. Yeah. Definitely looking nice, and we're down here in uh, on uh, Central Avenue, 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete at Ferks. Uh, whether you want to watch the Lightning, the Rays, of course, good luck to them tonight versus the Indians. We'll see uh, if they can beat them. They lost to them last night 3-1. to one. Or whether you want to watch the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, got to ask both of you guys here, even though your podcast is on it, you know, definitely want to want to get you involved with this, both of you guys. But we're going to be doing shows um, during the season for the road games, the watch parties. Uh, you guys going to be joining us here on this uh, Bucks Report content? Oh. Well, I know you are, Blake. <laughs> Jeez. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. You know. Yeah, I'll be here. 
All right. I'll be here. All right. What about I you? I think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So everybody's committed to this, and, and we're committed to you know, making this uh, an enjoyable experience. So you know, much has been made about this McCoy situation. I want to first go to Mr. Debo, as somebody uh -oh. said, uh, Ramblin' Tony Rossi. I know that you have some strong opinions about it. So go ahead. You have the platform, and then we'll get the new kid on camera here right. and say what so he has to say. My, my whole thing with the Jerry McCoy situation is this. I, I, I was reserved to the fact two months ago that this day was going to come, All right? So my argument, a lot of people, uh, you know, on the, uh, Facebook that I've had, the discussions I've had with a lot of people, it's basically been how the, how the Buccaneers handled the whole process. You know, if it was somebody that gave his life, blood, sweat, and tears to this organization and done everything right, uh, you know, the consummate pro on and off the field, family man. He, this is the type of guy that you tell your kids to, if you want to look up to somebody, look up to this guy. Mm -hmm. That's that's the type of guy McCoy is. And I just felt like the organization, whether it be Jason Light, even a, even Bruce Arians, because I'm, I'm going to come at him too, uh, the way he, you know, called the guy out, you don't know this man enough to even question anybody's passion. He just got here. So, it, you do that behind the doors, behind closed doors. You don't go out to the media and do say things like that about a player you really don't know a whole lot about when it comes down to a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, personal personal level. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my whole thing. Now with the with the whole Sue, I never said Sue was a bad player. I just feel like if you you want to know what Sue is, just go to the last three teams he's been on. Ask them. Ask those fans ask those players the type of guy he's been in the locker room mm -hmm. uh, and on the field, whether he's going freelance with Miami Dolphins or this past season with the Rams right. where he's been called out for not playing hard enough, taking plays off. Right. Super Bowl team. On the Super Bowl team, you and you got Aaron Donald you got, yeah. playing right next to you. The best defensive player in the league, and you still. Well, I mean, you look at the postseason. He played like a monster. Was that because yeah, they were did. double and triple teaming? But this, this is the Aaron problem. Donald. Right. Look at the Bucks. What is there a postseason berth here? Look, is hey, hey I mean, look, I'm going to put it out there, okay? This is a sports web. I'm your host, Peter Blake, <laughs> along with uh, Blake Cabell, Derek Jones, and, of course, Rep Matthew uh, of uh, Cannon Fire Podcast. I think they're a 10-6 team. I think they have the talent here. I believe in what they're doing with the coaching. I think the coaching is going to turn this around. So, yes, I do think they're a postseason team, and I definitely think that Sue fits better in the 3-4 defense, can be a better component, Rhett, to beat a Vey. You know, who, you look, you talk about, you know, Sue and Aaron Donald. Uh, now you have Sue and Vita Vey, a, a young, upcoming defensive lineman. Go ahead and comment on your feelings about McCoy and, and Sue uh, yeah, going forward. Yeah, Derek, back to what you had said about just the whole Gerald McCoy thing. You know, towards the latter end, not only was this a guy who at one point gave 110% to this franchise, he always found his way to just kind of not being respected enough by some of the Tampa fans. Yeah. And, and we saw that. And, I mean, kind of going forward to another thing you would mention with Bruce Arians, towards the end of his tenure here, they didn't do a very good job of making him look attractive to other teams. Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard ever since he's left that he's going to have 10-plus suitors looking for him, and that's, that's great. He has options. But even then, I feel like you would have gotten more of a trade if they did a better job just talking there about There you him. go. You know what I mean? Great point. Well, man. look, I, I definitely think they it, it was kind of mishandled, wasn't it? Yeah, when, yeah, when, no when, when, right. When Arians is coming out and saying in so many words, you know, he's not the same player he, he was four years you. ago, but you still have him on the team. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it definitely ruins your value. And it definitely, you know, they didn't do the same thing about Deshaun Jackson. And absolutely got people on the street here. That's okay. We're live here <laughs> on Box Report. It's the yeah. sports web. Gotta love St. Pete. They, they love it. Yeah. No, he yeah. was wearing a uh, LeBron yeah. James <laughs> yeah, jersey. And we could know, talk NBA later on. Go that, ahead. That's, that was my whole thing with Arians. Look, if you don't want the guy, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We get it. We understand. The salary cap is a problem because of the way we have mismanaged it over the last, you know, two, that's three years. Right. That's yeah. on Jason Light. But at the same time, you got a player like Jerry McCoy. If this guy, now he's been released, and you, if the reports are true, 10-plus teams that are suitors to bring this guy in as a, mm -hmm. as a player, that means he had trade value. But the problem was you opened your mouth and you said the wrong things 
and you diminished <laughs> his value because everybody knew that you were gonna release him. Yep. So you shot, you shot yourself in the foot. Got nothing out of it. Hold on, we forgot to mention too. Weren't we looking at getting Darren Lee? And what did Darren Lee get traded for? Six sixth round pick. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Wow. right. So we could have changed McCoy and got Darren Lee. <laughs> Well, but it was a salary though. It was a thirteen million dollars. It's a non-starter, guys. I mean, no team wanted to trade for the thirteen million. And then when there's teams out there that know that basically he's going to be cut eventually, why would they give anything up at that yeah, point? Exactly. But Derek's issue is that you didn't sell at all. Right. If you know in your heart that you are going to get rid of this guy, mm -hmm. then you need to lie. lie you need yeah, exactly. Lie. Yeah. Hey, you need to be a car oh, yeah. salesman. You need to make that. What is that? A Toyota V6. Uh, Look like a V8. <laughs> That's your car right there. That's your car right there. Stop, li car. stop lying. That's your car right there. You need to tell him make him believe it's a Mustang. For real. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. that's a real car. Car. A real, that's a real American-made car right there, a Mustang. I know, I have one. <laughs> Rhett, what do you think about this situation, man? I, uh, I know. Yeah, and like you had said, Gerald McCoy is a guy we knew. He had a price tag on him, and that price tag being thirteen million dollars. And what was it? The Bucks owed him ten mil next year, and sure. I think ten mil the year after that. Yeah, twelve million actually. Twelve, uh, thirteen, yeah. twelve, and then right. twelve. Well, so, twelve million is not going one million down, but it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of money. Either way, right? And um, and, and just the way that he carried that price tag, you know, before he was even released, you heard all of these rumors about the Browns being interested, and every key factor in every single one of those rumors was this team is going to wait for him to ultimately be released because yeah. they're not going to spend thirteen million dollars on a guy that the Bucks did a terrible job of talking up. Sure, you know what I mean. And for me, and, and what you're watching right now is the evolution of Sports Talk Television. It's the Sports Web live at Ferg's on Central Avenue, 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Cabell, Blake and Blake Sports. Derek Jones, we call him Debo here because he puts it down. And also, Rep Matthew, the new kid on the block. Uh, <laughs> That's right. A new podcast coming here. A Cannon Fire podcast that will be shown on uh, BucksReport.com, of course, yeah, absolutely, and of course, 102.5 The Bone, which, uh, got to ask you, how was that last night hosting? It, it was definitely, it was the first time I've ever had an opportunity to crack a mic on air mm -hmm. with the radio. Sure. And uh, it, it feels good, right? Everything the adrenaline pumps? It, oh, no, man, it yeah. was the anxiety, my stomach, it was just, I was everywhere, oh. but... It, as crazy guys. as it sounds, I felt more comfortable sitting in the studio chair yeah. than I did anywhere else all day. Yeah. yeah. Like once I got in there, sat down, threw the headphones on, I was like, all right, we can do this. Focus now, right? Now. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he's not nervous here, and that's good because, uh, again, we provide you that platform. We're going to, yeah. What was, you, what was you feeling the first time me and you did air together? No, not at all, because you know I can work with anybody. I can work with that guy down the street right there if I need to. But I remember the first time I was on radio it was a 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. You know, nobody's really listening. And look, when nobody's really listening, you have to talk on that mic. You know yeah. that you were doing radio oh, yeah. last night at midnight. So, you know, basically, and we're from Connecticut School of Broadcasting. What they taught us, Shana King, how you doing, Dave Collins? Just uh, throwing it out there. Oh, yeah. Going to Connecticut What's School. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? How you doing? We're here. Connecticut School of Broadcasting Brothers in arms on Bucks Report. Uh, just saying. But what they train you to do is basically you have to plan for no calls at all yep. for two or three yep. hours. And if, if you plan like that and you do your research, then you can definitely carry a show. But I was absolutely nervous. And especially, you know, doing your doing the, the first show at the other radio station in Clearwater and hosting it yourself because I was a co-host. For me, the biggest thing was beginning. Because once you set that table, then everybody can eat. If you don't set that table right and it comes off as flat, then that show most yeah. likely you gotta, is going to be flat. You got to hook them. Yeah, Without you do. Drop you, biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no risk it. No biscuit. No biscuit. <laughs> and yeah. speaking of food, there you go right there. That's there a go. that's oh, a reason that? yeah. right there to go out to Ferg's. Look at those wings right now. Uh, great food, great service, and, of course, great bartenders. And uh, once again, thank you to Mark Ferguson for hooking us up with our own bar, I giving this, us uh, this setting. Doesn't it, isn't it nice to be here, here instead man. of out in that sun? Yeah. Although I need some sun because I'm starting to look like Casper. But I work on that in the next couple of days here. But going – Will you shut up and be quiet? <laughs> I was a hip hop DJ at one point at that radio station. This video, folks. Dude, I, I got plenty of them. I'll show you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I, 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 I Why not? Let's video. do it. I'll All tell right. you what. We'll All go right. ahead. We'll download a, a Facebook. 
They call me DJ Spider at some point. It was uh, Power 106 and also the Headspring Takeover Hour, Power Saving Hip Hop. Power 106.1 or the Heat 106.1, Saving Hip Hop. Atlanta? Are we talking like Blink, Atlanta AKA Power 106? No, 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 no. It's just Power 106 at the time, local radio station in Clearwater, Saving gotcha. Hip Hop. One song at a time. Now, going forward here with Nadamik and Sue, what do you think of the move? Do you like the move? What are your doubts? What are your pros and cons going forward here, Rep? I like the move. I, I really do. And in a position where you're losing, for a lot of people, arguably your best defensive player, I know that's obviously up for debate, but you're losing okay. Gerald McCoy, such a key piece to that defensive line, a guy who's been there, he's established. The best option at the time was Nadamik and Sue. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're paying Indomica Sue three million less than you would have been paying Gerald McCoy. Sure. You don't really have any strings attached when it comes to looking ahead and seeing him here for the next two or three years. You know, maybe they like what he does enough to give him a second contract. But I feel like he's not a guy we have to worry about. And and he does have his fair share of cons. I'm not going to say that he doesn't. Right. I don't want to trash him because he plays for us now. Uh, but one of the things that I look at is... I think he's going to do a better job of holding people accountable mm -hmm. on that defensive line. We've heard all of the things about how he does seem to take plays off and, you know, take a quarter off here and there. Sure. And that's one thing. That's a little cool. I feel like with Indomitian Sue, you're getting less of a guy. Let's compare him to Chris Baker, unfortunately. Oh, no. He's not Chris Baker. Baker was Let's not do that. Yeah. yeah. Let's don't, not don't, do don't that. Him. Don't mention <laughs> him. Had Daddy Fat Snacks. No. <laughs> with the mentality. <laughs> right. You know, he's not going to put up with... You remember when Chris Baker jumped off sides and cost us the Carolina yeah. game and right. then laughed about it? Right. The and then laughed about it? Yeah. Sue, I mean, listen, if he takes plays off, he takes plays off. I, I, I can't... I, I don't know. But... I just feel like there's going to be less of people getting away with those kind of things with a guy like that on the line. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I think maybe we'll start seeing more people held accountable. He's not going to let stuff get past him when oh, I got a question. All right, Debo, right? go ahead. Have at it. I got a question. Sure. All right. We know Sue, his his mantra is toughness, uh, you know, strong, just just a mauler at the point of attack, right? Mm-hmm. Vita Vea is the same way. Okay. Yeah, would, I mean, would you would you in a situation where you have Sue mm -hmm. uh, approach Vita Vey? How would how would Sue approach Vita Vey if he wanted to say something about holding him accountable? Well, look, Vita that, is a man and, amongst and, himself, and and and, and, so, and that is that is the big key. That's a big question. With bringing how they gonna work a together. player with Sue, does his mentality affect a young player like Ave? Does his mentality maybe not necessarily a Devin White, but you never know. You put a guy like that, but. From what you hear, guys, and you guys can all comment on this, I've never heard about him being a bad locker room guy. I've never heard about him being a bad teammate. What you hear is from 2011, stepping yeah, on Miami Evans. Was, well, yeah. Miami's a mess, okay? Miami, hey, hey, Miami is, hey, Miami no, is never, Miami, Miami is a mess all, all right the now. time. Uh, well, right they then. had Richie Incognito yeah. there, and they had the offensive linemen, and they had coaches, uh, coach snorting coke. I mean, come on. That, that, that's now. Right. Right. We're talking about back, was it? They were drafted in 2010, so that was 2014. Right. And their contracts were up. Who's it this? wasn't like that then. Who's to say Adam Gase wasn't doing coke his time in Miami? Did you see his press oh. conference when he first got hired in Hey, New what York? was up and with it, his eyeballs? Oh, man. I don't know what's going on there. That situation in itself could have yeah. a whole show with them firing the general manager after he spends $100 million on Le'Veon Bell. Right. Ooh. And uh, C.J. Mosley. And then you draft Quinnen Williams in, and Polite. So I don't I understand like it there, Williams. but. Was it Anthony like Barr pulling a Josh McDaniels? He was in and somebody. out of there, right? Well, that's a reason why he did that, maybe. So that organization is messed up. So when people say, you know, they're gloom and doom, look, you could be the New York Jets just in the season. They have talent, but nobody knows who the general manager there. Nobody knows what kind of structure and strategy they got well, going forward. I mean, we don't know who our GM is either, even though. Oh, it's come <laughs> on. Now, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. And well, what you're watching right now is the evolution of sports talk television. It's the Sports Web. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Cabell, Derek Jones, Debo, and, of course, Rhett Matthew of Cannon Spire Podcast, which is going to be seen here very soon. And, of course, 102.5.
uh, the bone. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and read some comments here, and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of move on and, and, and get your future thoughts of what you guys think this Bucks team is in 2019, if it's not too soon. I don't think it's ever too soon, but uh, there is a full house today. Somebody says, Debo, uh, biking in Florida in late May with the heat. Dang. Yeah, it is very hot out here, yeah, but is. I will tell you, that fan and the br somewhat the of a fan breeze. fan is helping a lot. Thanks to Ray Kennedy, <laughs> Tampa Ray Kennedy in the background, running the camera and getting the fans and everything. Glad he's got some shade back yes, there, too, Yes, he man. definitely it's, has some shade. It's brutal out there. I think you call him Camera Ray Kennedy. No, I said, well, you could say Cam Cam Camera Ray Cam Kennedy, Ryan. or you could say Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> you shut Cam up Ray and Ray. be quiet. Uh, let's hear it, Debo, and they're... Uh, that's from Ramblin' Tony Rossi there. He has the uh, violin playing. That's funny. Uh, here's the harsh reality. No matter what your opinion is of McCoy, the Bucks obviously didn't think he was a $13 million man in 2019 yeah. period. Agree? Uh, did I just see Peter rolling his eyes? I did for a minute there. Johnny Dean, the professor, the instigator today, trying to call some rip between the guys here, but it's okay. It's all good and fun. Uh, Rhett, when can we hear you on the bone again, buddy? Uh, I, I wish I could tell you a date, but I honestly have no idea. I think I uh, play it by ear right now. Well, you know, you always got a spot here on Bucks Report on the Sports Web and Blake and Blake Sports. So Appreciate you guys. There you go. Uh, the rest of the NFL is echoing in that as well. Watch, he will earn around nine million or less in guaranteed money. Now, talk to John Sable of ABC Action News. He was saying Cleveland was ready to sign him, but McCoy wanted to fulfill his visit with the Baltimore Ravens on Tuesday. He's got integrity, man. He told him he would come right. visit, so he's going to make sure he make that visit. How do you think this turns out, guys? Do you think, Rhett, that he'll sign with the uh, Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens, or I another like team that's not being mentioned like the Carolina Panthers? And, Debo, go ahead and comment too, buddy. I like Baltimore, man. Um, I, yeah. Baltimore is just like, you know, they're, they're the front, the university of – Front sevens. They they know how to bring guys. They know how to develop guys. Whether they draft them, free agency, they know what you know football up front looks like. I think that'll be a perfect situation for Jerry McCoy. Um, Cleveland, I, they you know they they're coming along. They're getting there. So, but so what was what was the deal with Miles Garrett saying just not too long ago? He basically said like, oh, we don't need Gerald McCoy. He, well, because he's going to be a rotational player, which is what I've yeah, said here, fellas. To me, he's a rotation. I, I mean, at the end of the day, that's I, a young I think, player that's just running his mouth. Yeah. Well, remember, he is. Well, that's a pretty good young player. Well, yeah, he's yeah. He is. Yeah. Dallas needed to trade up and get him because he didn't want to play him. Right, yeah, right, right. Let's flash that back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, well. So we'll petty, Blake. Like this. I if, remember what they say. If you don't <laughs> want Jared McCoy. Then you can go and play against him in Baltimore twice a year, and nah. then you can wish you had him because he's still going to be he's still going to be a pretty good player, especially and, for Baltimore. And Derek, I'll agree with you, man. I think when looking at the, all the teams that have come forward, I think Baltimore makes the most sense. You know, Cleveland would be nice, but at the end of the day, Cleveland. it's Cleveland, and Cleveland is a team now. They have talent at every position. Yeah. What do they really need to go out on a limb for Gerald McCoy? Like you said. At best, he's going to be a rotational player. Yeah, because he's deep. And, I mean, for the price yeah. tag. That's good for him because, look, you can preserve him. He's a player that has not been able to stay healthy. Well, apparently he's going to retire a and, bunch and so then, keep him healthy. Well, right? well, well, yeah, right? but here's the thing. You, you can never now make the excuse he doesn't have yeah, anything right? around him because he has Sheldon Richardson and he has Miles Garrett around him. So I, I think Cleveland, he'll end up signing with Cleveland. I understand that Joe Cullen there, the defensive line coach of the Ravens, is there. But to me, the Brown, and I think the Browns are real. It just depends on Baker Mayfield and his, you know, his. Uh, now, his right. He wants a chance to go to. The, yeah. He wants a chance to go to the postseason at this point. Well, right. I think that's going to be his decision. Another thing too, I've been. Yeah, I think Baltimore probably has a better shot another at the thing, postseason than Cleveland right now. Another thing too is, I mean, I've been seeing reports saying that his preferred destination is Cincinnati. Because Cincinnati is Mark Duffner up there now. He's got wow. another Geno Atkins. Yeah, Geno Atkins. Yeah, Geno Atkins. Geno Atkins. Well. Yep. So he's right. got some connections in Cincinnati. I mean, that's his preferred, but you know, it's the NFL. You never really well. I mean, what you want. Andy Dalton at 32 years old with a new coach, and he's a lot of people are saying they're yeah, wow, 32 man. years old. I mean, and you you got a rookie coach. Is that the type of situation you want to get in? I know Geno Atkins is playing on the other side, but are they really going to give you the best chance to win a ring at this point? No, not not Cincinnati. No. I don't think I, I think that McCoy was really trying to ring hop. He'd have done that a long time ago. Okay. McCoy is a family man. I think we all agree on that. Sure. If 
you really want to find out what McCoy is doing, I would pay attention to his wife's social media. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> <laughs> She's she the new Miko? Is she the new she Miko? Blocked she blocked you? Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Ultimately, I think I, I had, what she says, where the families don't go, I think that's where she's going to end up going. I had posted something that was basically a screenshot of her comment saying, oh, and they think you want to play in Tampa. Uh, Cause she had posted something, and or he had posted, and it, way down there in the comments, she has something that says, "And they really think you want to stay in Tampa." I saw the media that. Always has you mismatch. I posted that. She liked it, and then blocked me. <laughs> hey, the that, hey, wow! You made the it. You made you gotta it, love social media. You gotta love. There you go. He's official. He's official me here. And G Mac are like best friends now. Because of <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a family. I don't man. even have a he wife. Has a lot of say in his life. Right. And, and like, so she's getting outspoken on social media. Well, then <laughs> keep his wife happy. He can, <laughs> keep a keep child yeah. support check. And I'm really? so, I mean, uh, ultimately, I think it's going to end up where his family wants to go. I don't mm -hmm. know what connections he's got in other states. Only, only one we know is California, where he keeps going to. Right. And that would be the Rams. Well, he's got the connect. He's got yeah. the connections with Baltimore, with Joe Cullen being his defensive I mean, like, line coach. As far as, like always, constantly showing up. Right. Have, have they mentioned like the the ten teams, or they just mentioned like a few of the ten teams? I mean, according to John Sable of ABC Action News, he's only heard the three team. It's it's going to be the the three teams are the Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens, and possibly the Panthers if they can even get a look. And you look at the Panthers situation, being a division rival, playing the Bucks twice a year. You know that'd be Ooh. a perfect situation for no. him to get back at the Bucks if he would want to do just that. But the Carolina situation also has Dontario Poe and Kawan oh, Short. Dontario Poe. Yeah. Dontario Poe. Who? The guy's getting paid lots of money. Who? The guy that had like what are you, one uh, good half season. Yeah, yeah, you know Mike yeah, Jones? Yeah. <laughs> you, you ain't getting it. Who? I don't know who. Now, now I say who? this. Who? As far as what? The, you know, Carolina Panthers situation. Uh, you know, that, that that could be a good fit too. You know, playoff team. They got asked, you know, that's a decent team. They had a down year last season. But as a Buccaneer fan, I don't want to see him twice a year. Nah, man. Because I'm going to be honest here. I don't like I don't like the construction of our offensive line. Well, I think the offensive <laughs> line could be – and let's, I'll, I'll tell you what, let's change subjects a little bit. Oh, we'll reach – well, here's the thing. <laughs> would we all would we all agree here, fellas, that the offensive line is going to be improved with the subtraction of Caleb Beninock being your right guard? Is he I, off the team? Is he still on the team? Or? Like the ghost is still on. The space ghost is still there. The space ghost? Well, no, no, but he's a right tackle. He was drafted out of UCLA as a right tackle. He's not a right guard. So overall, your offensive line is going to be that much better. Without him, and How? look, you, you you played football before. When you have to cover for a week length, oh yeah, it's it a bad sure, thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I so what you saying that? So you saying the coaching staff was was a poor choice in moving a right tackle to right yes. guard, and ultimately he's looking like a fish out of water. Yeah, the season. right. And on top of that, knowing he played so poorly, they never took him out. Yeah, they yes. just it. <laughs> which is why Dirk Cutter was fired on the coaching staff. Everybody's saying, yes. "Love it's alive." Yes. It's not good. Let the truth set you free. It's all about coaching hey, and talent. Who, who had like pictures of who? Because I would have been took that guy out the lineup. Well, so who had the pictures on their on their hard drive? I mean, I'll I take Kappa back. Kappa's a third round draft pick, and I think I you're happy with Kappa being a rookie, getting beat up like that. Yeah. Benenock in there, knowing he has no business being. I think I think you put it out. That's your car right there. I, I think you pointed out that he had a pancake block with the guy on the ground, and he still found a way to trip over his own feet and missed the block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he kind of looked like McCoy on those one-on-one -on -one matchups with that film that you put out there. Oh, tell the truth now. Don't do that. Don't do that now, Peter. <laughs> and we're live at Ferg's on Central Avenue on the Sports Web. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Blake Cavill, who's ready to kill me, Derek Jones, Demo, and Rhett Matthew of Cannon Fire Podcast, having a good time here. All right, so the offensive line, when you make the – and I, I always talk about this, if you're you're going to say that Jameis Winston didn't necessarily have the greatest coaching. Could you guys say the same thing about the offensive line? Yes, we, yeah. Okay. But this is the thing. Okay. Even with bad coaching, there's a, you can still see a bad player on the lineman or defensive lineman because you, you, you get out physical. <laughs> you well, 
Coaching cannot take away from somebody just just, just getting brutally dominated at the line of scrimmage. Well, here's, you can scheme, but if you're not strong enough, you're just not strong enough. Well, here's the thing, too, and I think what's going to set the tone for that offensive line is we've got some guys on that line that we know can play. Mm-hmm. Ali Marpet, yeah. what, first half of the season last year, he was the best guard in the NFL. Yeah. So you've got Ryan Jensen. I mean, he's sloppy. That's my biggest complaint with Ryan Jensen. Well, he's getting paid like $10 million. You invested so much money in that line, but you're exactly right. Ryan right. Jensen is sloppy. A lot of penalties Ryan, last year. A lot year. of penalties. Some Baltimore some money. Ah. Whoa. And, and, and Donovan Smith. Shade. You know, Donovan Smith, I think a common pattern. Not so much Ali Marpet, but you look at Ryan Jensen, you bring up the sloppiness, and Donovan Smith gets flagged more for jumping off sides than anybody I've ever known. Mm. You know why These he jumps off sides? Oh, easy. Yeah, right? Easy. Uh, no. He's not no. Bad. He's no. No, he's not. I mean, Come on, Blake. You must yeah. be grumpy. Yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. eat. You must be grumpy. But if you can, if you can clean those guys up and you can just make the mentality, like you know, we've seen these guys play in the past. All they gotta do is go out there, clean it up, and set the tone for a guy like Kappa, who may or may not be there. But Earl Watford, yeah. he's a guy who we know he's ready to take it seriously. Sure. He's ta- He's out here talking about taking people's jobs. So you clean it up, man. I think you get a, 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 an improved line. Sure. And then the coach, the offensive line. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, yeah. Yeah. Tampa yeah. Ray Kennedy yeah. just uh, yeah had a cold there. He said running game. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm amazed. And we talked about this the last show on Blake and Blake with Tampa Ray Kennedy in the background. You know, people say, Winston, 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 turnovers, deep ball. No running game I, since no 2015. Right. 31 and a half sacks by the offensive line, and your defense is god awful ever since Winston has got here. 26 points average, 29 last year. So, fellas, you mean to tell me once again, and I'm going to throw this out there for national pundits to listen. You mean to tell me that if this team scores 28 points in a the game, they lose? Yeah. <laughs> and that, and that's not the biggest yeah. problem. No. Okay. The well, then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you even look yeah. at you even look at Week One against the Saints last right, year. Those right, right. We could have put fifty on them. Sure. And at one point in that game, we had what a twenty-point lead. Yep. And just like that, yep. just like that, the Saints were quick. back in the game. And I was I was talking with Evan. He's like, "Listen, man, I don't remember the exact scenario, but he basically said if the if the Saints score right here, the Bucks are not going to win this game. And we've seen that happen countless times. We almost saw it against Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. You get yeah. a twenty-point lead, you can't sustain." And then a team comes back on you, and what do you do? You're all worn out. Well, you've got a quarterback with no help. Right. Well, you're you know, you're playing to lose. I mean, you have Mike yeah. Smith, who he's playing that you know off well, ten well, yeah. off ten yards what a clown. defense. Yeah. And I and I say oh. this. Say it again, man. Wow. <laughs> and I, and I Shots fired by Rhett the, Matthew. The, Go uh, ahead, Steve. Last season, I'm gonna be I'm on record right now to say I wasn't a huge Peyton Barber fan. No, and he's he's won me over. He won me over. Like I'm all in on Peyton Barber. Okay. And last season, I felt like Dirk Cutter got away from the running game, even when we were running well. That, that's a problem. Like when mm-hmm. you were averaging four, five yards a carry, you need to keep running the ball, not dropping back and throwing it more. Yeah. That you eating the clock. You already got a bad defense. You keep them off the field. Yeah, and even Bruce Arian said this in a function in the offseason when you have a quarterback that's thrown 40 to 50 times a game trying to come back, you're going to have those turnovers. I just love it. People just walk well, over. Well, right Tom Brady can shot, throw the ball you know? 40 and 50 times and right. not turn the ball over. Right. Right. I mean, you're going to have to turn over the ball, but you, you've got to have balance to the offense yeah, yeah, Tampa Ray Kennedy <laughs> getting into the shot there. Thanks a lot there, buddy. Uh, let's read what Tony Rossi says. Uh, the Bucks were never looking at Nabby and Lee. That was pure speculation on the fans' part. Uh, Douglas says, uh, please stop. McCoy wasn't traded because his play didn't match his salary. Every team has up-to-date uh, files on every active NFL that. player. A throwaway line by a new head coach didn't torpedo McCoy's value. Uh, just stop. Blake needs to raise his mic. He sounds like he's talking for 10 yards out. I, I think you're fine uh, right now. The wing, somebody says, Daddy Fat Snacks. Um, that, that's a, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I guess that's Chris Baker. 
Uh, Sue is a one-year player. He's in it for his cash. Don't expect him to be a team yeah, that, yeah, I'll leader. Agree yeah. I'll agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Here to win. Please, please, please don't compare him to Lazy Swaggy Baker. Oh, God, uh, I yeah, hope he bad, doesn't turn bad. into that no. here. I'll take it for that. Knock on, let's Adam. knock on wood yeah. there. Yeah. Knock on wood. No, no, no. It wasn't. Wise. Right. It wasn't from a uh, from a play. from a play standpoint. It was just the mentality of. He's a nasty guy. I mean, yeah, he's here for his cash. But at the end of the day, he'll appreciate it if we win, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it comes with the Yeah, we have yeah. to win because I, I feel like if we don't if we don't win, then that's when you're going to see the other side of McCoy that you don't want to see. Yeah. I mean, Sue, that's the side of him you don't want to see when story. there's nothing hey, to play for. I, I, I want a tone quit. setter. I was going to say, when we lost, we saw the – and you get that Sue? I don't think you're going to lose this year. I don't. I, I, I'm not looking uh, at losing hey, this did year. Did you put your bet in? at, in, uh, at the, put it in because I think you'll win. My bet's in. My it's bet's in. in. Man, my bet's in. I want to see the ticket. Ten wins? Hey. I, ten wins. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> ten wins. <laughs> yeah. Ten and six, and I'll tell you why. And what you're watching right now is the evolution of Sports Talk Television, the Sports Web Live at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Blake Cabell, uh, Derek Jones, Debo, and, of course, Rhett Matthew of Cannon Fire Podcast 102.5. The bone definitely listen to him. Yes, I know Vegas has them six and a half wins. Well, by the way, six and a half. That's I not what, what, yeah, well, 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 no, you're listening to somebody else, yeah. another <laughs> radio station, which we won't mention. Oh, I put that bet in. Shoot. Three wins? I'll tell you right now, you look at history, it's shown what Bruce Arians coming on the first year with the Cardinals. They were a 5-11 and team, didn't have as much talent. He turns them around. They're 10-6. and They got more talent here. I think it can happen again in 2019 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 10-6, and six, just saying. All right, let's read more comments here. Uh, I can see that I don't have Jenna's Insider's light maybe packing his desk if Sue uh, tanks. Uh, Rhett Matthews is a nice addition. Uh, he will go to the Browns. Absolutely a nice addition. Thank McCoy you will be in the rotation, which he could benefit from. McCoy is a third pick. He shouldn't need to have players around him to shine. Come on, man. I agree. Um, I don't know what's going on, Blake, uh, Blake with your sound over there. So we have to figure this out. Uh, well, no, I, I, I hope I didn't here. Uh, Red is awesome. Great voice. Great takes. True professional. Hey, that's what we have here on Bucks Report. BucksReport.com. He's not working at all? He's been turned off. It's on. I mean, go ahead and take a look at that ray in the back. We'll see what's going on here. Go ahead. You got a raise prediction? All right, All right. Uh, you want to get him on here with you really quick? We'll, we'll go ahead and start. Yeah, or Derek, come on over, man. I got you. It's easiest. This is the best point of interest. I mean, you can sit here yeah. and, and, and the camera. Yeah, and he got his place on his. Uh, you can sit on his guy's lap right here. All right. <laughs> you need to stop right now. <laughs> Somebody cut his mic, but make sure that his mic is working there on that mixer. What's your name, sir? Uh, Cody. Cody. All right, Cody, uh, you're, we're out here. Well, we're live on the sports web, the evolution of sports talk television. I'm your host, Peter Blake. you got Blake Cavill, Derek Jones, and, of course, Rep Matthew, 102.5, The Bone. You're a big-time Rays fan. They lose last night to the Cleveland Indians, and this is the great thing about our following 61,000 on Facebook. We give every fan an opportunity to have a voice. What do you see the Rays this year? Are you excited about this situation? Kind of struggled lately, blowing out the Dodgers, blow out the Indians, and then last night, no run support for Blake Snell. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, I think that it's going to be a good year. I've been a Rays fan for years, and uh, this this lineup that we have right now is pretty exciting. If we can keep everybody healthy, I think uh, I think we'll see a good showing. Good showing. So over 90 wins this year. I think over 90. Yeah, I think yeah, it's still going to be hard yeah. to make the playoffs this even. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think really? So. Oh, he's, he's arguing. He said. He, well, he, well he, I, he I, he look, though? they if their pitching is defense is on, they get some of these guys back, especially at the catching position and the pitchers with Jose De Leon and also uh, Honeywell. I think that will help going forward. With that being said, you being a big time Rays fan, a, a lot is a much has been made about the stadium situation. You want to see it in St. Pete, or do you? Because I come down here and I love the fan interaction here at Ferg's. Do you think it gets done down here in St. Pete, or does it eventually go to Tampa? Honestly, I, I'll watch them either way. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. You know, it really yep. doesn't matter to me as long as they stay in Tampa. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I want what I want you to do right now is uh, tell them right there that you've been on the sports web, the evolution of sports talk television on Bucks Report. Uh, the Bucks Report. Yeah, that's right. Bucks Report, 61,000 following on the sports web. All right. All right. Tell All your right. friends, and uh, you know what? Are you a Bucks fan? 
I am, yeah. Okay, we're going to be doing watch parties during the season during the road game. So I want you to come out here again. Right. We'll get you on camera. Nobody else is doing it out there. No other radio station is doing it. No other TV station is doing it. But the sports web, the evolution of sports talk television on Bucks Report is doing it, all right? All right, that sounds great. All right, man. Thanks hey, man. a lot for coming on here. There you go. That's your yeah. fan interaction on for, at, live at Ferg's on the sports web. And we'll get Rhett Matthew back on here, Tampa Ray Kennedy, uh, doing a good job. So Thanks a lot for coming in. Wins? And uh, there you go. Go Rays. We'll see what happens uh, tonight. 90, what's so um, oh, let's didn't take my job. No, no, he was he was he was good. He wanted to get on camera. He talked about the Rays. That's always good. Here we got somebody walking by. He's a Florida Gator fan. So I'm wondering if they want to get. You want to get on? Are you sure? You nothing to brag about here about the Gators? Come on, come on, come on in here. Look, come on in here. Don't be, good. don't be shy. Oh, come on, come on. Florida State. Oh, no. How long? Come on. <laughs> All right. So we're live here. We're getting fans on here on the sports web. Uh, you're live on Bucks Report. Go ahead and sit down in the chair. I don't bite. Neither does that camera right there. Uh, so, what's your name, sir? David. David, how you doing? David, Good. welcome you? to the Sports Web Live on Bucks Report. Sixty-one thousand following on Facebook. Gators finally turn it around this year. They beat Florida State. I'm a Florida State fan, but I give you props. Your, your quarterback situation turns around. What do you think about the future of the Gators this year and Dan Mullen? He's the right choice, right? Yeah, I think he uh, knows what he's doing. He definitely changed the culture. Get, get closer at, he definitely changed the culture at Florida, which is something they needed. Um, he's not scared to kick people off the team and make people be responsible for their actions. Okay. All right. So do you think this year that they can challenge in that SEC? Of course, you always have uh, Alabama, LSU is in contention. But is this the year you challenge or are you thinking another couple years for the Gators? And I'll tell you what, throw you on the spot here. How many wins the Gators have this year? They Are we including the bowl game? Mm-hmm. No. They had 11. They have 11 this year. Right. 11 this year. Okay. All right. 11 this year. What I want you to do is tell them you've been on Bucks Report on the sports web. I've been on Box Report. Bucks Report. Box Report. On been. the sports web. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, buddy. You'll get it. What? what? <laughs> all right. Good stuff here. Getting fan He's interaction. Thank you. <laughs> Looks a lot easier right, than it is, sure. doesn't it? All right. Let's get Rhett back on here. We got fans coming nervous. by. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Again, we're live at Ferg's uh -huh. on Central Avenue. <laughs> Will you shut up over there? What are you guys talking about? I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Blake Cabell, Derek Jones. Back like he was choking. What's wrong with that? What? It's a good. It's a good slap. What is he? Is he gonna yeah, choke? Made him skip a beat. He well, lost his, lost oh well. Wow. You came over here as a Gator fan. That's what That's you get. Why you hit him. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Red Matthew, a fire. Just recorded assault. Oh jeez. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Listen to you. Listen to you. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see here. Let's take some more comments, and then uh, we'll move on to some college football big time announcements this week in the Bay Area involving USF. Oh, yeah. And also the Outback Bowl, as we got some footage also. Yeah, uh, yes, it did. So we'll, we'll get those comments. But let's take some more uh, Bucks report text messages here. Uh, the Bucks O-line ship is with a few holes. Uh, what if it goes to the NFC South team? Oh, well, double team McCoy play over. Uh, Panthers are cash-strapped, aren't they? I believe they are. They were at um, one point, but I don't think they're that bad right now. Okay. They got more than $200,000. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I, I agree. <laughs> um, and I hope, it, Ray, in the background here, is uh, Blake's mic good? Can you check on the phone there see if it's is good? It good? Is, is that Blake? Can you swap mic? So that's the, yeah, that's the backup backup, I think. Well, I don't want any dead air, so just go on your go on your phone there. Go ahead, Blake. What? Go ahead. Good. Oh, yeah, we're good. I All think right. it's your device. Or we'll fix it if it's, again, he's live television. Running. Shut up. <laughs> uh, in order for Winston to be successful, he's got to have a running game. Agree. Uh, Ali Marpet has to uh, lead the line if they have some sort of success. Uh, Rhett, true story on Donovan Smith. The guy as a whole is undisciplined. To be fair, those can be cleaned up a bit last season. I definitely agree with that. It could definitely happen. Uh, with the coaching staff, Harold Godwin, and of course Joe Gilbert as being in the offensive line coach. In case you didn't think I knew, I, mean, I did. Wide, wide, widely regarded as one of the worst in the NFL. Like there, there really is no sugarcoating how bad this guy was as an O-line coach. Right. 
it's it's something that I wish I could just make up because a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's the Bucks. A, a bad old line is something they've worked with for a while, but this guy didn't do us any favors. No. So, uh, Warhop or whatever his name was. George yeah. Warhop. Yeah, that's Greg your Warhop. that's your favorite coach right there. So, anything you want to say about that, uh, Derek Jones? No, no. no okay, all right. You're good. <laughs> you're all talked <laughs> out now. <'cause> that's... <laughs> all right. Let's see. Peyton Barber will get at least Caleb fifty. Benenot. Yeah, Caleb Ben and not done. Oh, no, in a so say, the offensive line's not going to not gonna be good. You it's subtraction. Caleb Ben not going to be your right guard. The line's going to be automatically good. The question Don't is, no, till they get on the field. Well, is, right. But is Alex Kappa going to be the starter, or is it going to be Earl Warhop? I think you're or Earl Warhop or oh. Watford. Oh man, Earl oh, Warhop. Man. That was bad. No, no, hopefully he doesn't Warhop, turn into Warhop. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, uh, Peyton Barber will get at least 1,500 yards from scrimmage this year. That's from Earl. How much? 1,500. Yeah, 1,500. Top back rush. Yeah. I'll say, I'll Ooh. say, say best case scenario like 11. Yeah, 11 to 12. I, I think yeah, it's possible. I don't think he's going to be involved in the passing game that much. Uh, well, could he? Could be. Oh, we're talking from Grand scrimmage. Is nothing. It's 53 yards a game. The question is yeah. Ronald Jones. Ronald oh. Jones has been talked about at nauseum on this broadcast and other broadcasts. He shorts and that T-shirt, boy. Yeah. Well, I tell you oh, right hey, now, the coaches are saying too. that he's been impressive. <laughs> you guys believe that he's going to take that next step to be the second-round pick, eventually take some of those carries away from Barber. If, if I, I'll speak from experience from being a player. If you, if you, for him, it should be that simple. Your job is to only play, only play running back. Me, what I learned football so much, I try to study everybody's position. I'm not sure if Ronald Jones is doing that, but it's good, especially if you're a running back, to know all. To know, all, yeah. All offense alignments, assignments. Yep. Their calls. You know where you cut back. And, and, and that's the reason why, because pass protection. You yeah. Do you know what their blocking calls and all that? And I don't think Jones did that. I think everybody here, all the fans, he looked like a deer in the headlights when he was on the field. Yeah. He literally looked like he had no idea. I think Jameis probably had to tell him where he was going. But so I think he did a few times. I did. think I but saw him a couple count, times. You can count on two hands just how many times in total he was on the field oh, yeah. last year, right? I yeah. Mean, I don't think I needed two hands. What, he played like three <laughs> games? <laughs> you know, two it's, fingers. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. J JP Peek could count them up. Oh, now come on. Did you really just <laughs> what? say that? <laughs> Jeez. All right, it's enough of you. I uh, got to say, I like the font on Red's graphic better. Yeah, I guess it's uh, updated, so we probably have to update that, but that looks bold there. Uh, it, does, it does look bold. It does look bold. Uh, Donovan Smith gets Peter's called bias. for so many penalties. Uh, he carries his own flag. Uh, somebody oh, says he's a bum. <laughs> he's a bum. I'm, come on. I don't, he's I don't not know. a bum. Not like he's not a he's bum. A, about Donovan Smith, is in play? No, he said he's he's Donovan Smith is a bum. He can be a bum. I need a Jaeger bomb. So we'll listen to you me, there, Blake. Me, really quickly about Donovan Smith, just before I forget. So, so I work in radio. I work in the entertainment industry. And one of the things that we do the most, especially in promotions, is, is we make appearances at events. And some of these events are held at nightclubs. Some of mm -hmm. them are at concerts. Sure. I've got a buddy of mine who works at another station, and he tells me there isn't a single buck that he sees more out goofing off than D. Smith. Oh. I believe it. Here's uh -oh. the thing. At the same time, this is a guy who's never missed a game, so mm -hmm. how angry can you be at him for it? But this, I mean, this can all be tied back to just the un un undisciplined of it. Well, it's know? a tone It's a tone setter at yeah. this point. Bruce Arians is coming in here. He's basically saying, I'm the new sheriff. If you guys don't do what you need to do and produce at your position, you're benched. And that's exactly what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need after – struggling for the last two years with 5-11 and 11 seasons, Cameron's that's what there. they need. They need somebody to put a fire under their asses, and that's what Bruce Arians and this coaching <laughs> staff is going to bring, in my opinion. All right, uh, let's see. I uh, can't run if you're behind 20 points late in the third true. quarter. Uh, very true. Yeah, Dirk Cutter didn't call plays last year when he did. Uh, what was it, 501 yards and three points? Should have been fired on that day. How do you get 501 yards I was there. and three points? I was oh, there, I was man. There too. It was terrible. I was in the, the, Washington the Washington game. Yeah, the Washington game. With the three oh, with missing offensive linemen. Horrible. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. Um, and I think Cutter took back over. I already knew what this was. It was He it, took back over play calling. They, and he said, what did he say? He's for personal reasons. Yeah, the personal uh, reasons. Yeah, I have my reasons. That's what he said. I have my reasons. was because you knew you were going to be fired and you yep. wanted to take credit for the yeah, success of the offense. That was, but that see, was that's job security. That was 100 was an insurance check. We was the highest scoring offense in the league at that point. First three weeks. First three weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. So what what need did you feel like you had to take over the play calling for? Like your your assistant was doing his job. Assistant. 
Yeah, let I him mean, do his job. Now, if he's the offensive coordinator it, and he's it, doing such a great job, right? Why take over the play calling? Well, it's kind of like Lovey Smith. You get desperate. You know, Leslie Frazier starting to put together a great defense, and then all of a sudden, Lovey's like, "Well, it's not good enough." Got to save my job. I got to take over the defensive play calling. And then here lies the problem. He gets fired also. So you can't be desperate in that situation. You've got to trust the people yeah. that you yeah. hire. Guys, I trust the people around me here. That's why it's so great. On the sports web, the evolution of sports talk television. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Blake Cabell, Derek Jones, Debo, and of course, Rhett Matthew here of the Cannon Fire podcast being shown on Bucks Report, of course, 102.5. The bone. Peter is so optimistic. Laugh out loud. Seven to nine. Best case scenario could easily be six and ten or four and twelve. All right, let's go down the line here and let's see how many wins everybody has. I know Blake, your prediction, but go ahead and put it out there. Derek Jones, you first. Well, I'm one of those fans that like to start low. Okay. Because right now it's really too early to be doing record predictions, but I don't want to, you know, set these high standards and then be disappointed. You know, when when they don't make that number. So I, I usually start low. Let's say they won five games last last season. I'm going to give them a three-game improvement. I'm going to give them eight and eight. Okay, eight and eight. Uh, Blake. Nine and seven. Nine and seven. Rhett. Uh, you know, kind of like you said, I, I think one of the things that I've learned of being a Bucks fan all of these years is when you want to look at this team critically and look at the future, you have to be as realistic as possible. I think worst-case scenario – Six and ten. Yeah. I think best case scenario, ten and six with a wild card exit. All right, sure. there you go. So that's what you get here on uh, the Sports Web, the evolution of Sports Talk Television here live at first 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether you want to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, definitely get out here. Great food, great service, and, of course, a great atmosphere, the official home of Bucks Reports on the Sports Web, Blake and Blake Sports, and, of course, those road watch parties coming up during I got a question. the regular season. Yes. What 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 name do you think they give the uh, XFL team? I have no idea. I want to bring, bring back. The Why are they not yeah. giving any I names out for the so teams? Long. Huh? Right. Tampa Bay Bandits, man, bring them back. Well, want to bring saw, them back? You guys saw we got uh, what is it now? Open tryouts for XFL coming up. Who's going? If out I, there if with I was me, like right? five uh, years young, I would do it. Out of retirement. Let's do Derek, it, man. You coming out? If I was five years young, I would do it. Uh, right. Five I'll years. That's all that's stopping you there, Derek Jones. Five years because I'm 41 now, man. That means I'm too old. <laughs> me, look, I, I'll, I'll just broadcast here on Box Report. What about you, Blake? Who, me? Yeah. I don't know. I might have a little something left in the tank. You got a little something left hey, in the tank? I got, I got about five uh -oh. really good pass rushes, and then I'm done. Then you're done. That's it? Just to say, hey, I made it to the pros. I give them five good runs, no, and no. then I'm out. Hey, I'm out. This, man. You go I'm retiring at halftime. Go in the XFL, even if you don't do well. Just rub some elbows of Vince McMahon. He'll hook you up, WWE. Hey, exactly. I mean, that's, that's it. it. If you're a failed superstar, you know, you could be like lights out Sean Merriman, you yeah, know. Come here and be in WrestleMania next. Right. Yeah. Don't don't WrestleMania, WrestleMania 36. 36. Don't forget yeah. One. Don't forget one of the Bucks' own that is a WrestleMania star now. Can y'all guess who? Tyler. Who? Can y'all guess who? Who is a Bucks player? I'll even give you a hint. Played in the secondary and is now a wrestling star. I know in who it WWE? is. I know who it is. Sabby Piscatelli. No, for real? Yes. Compared to John Lynch. Yes. What's his wrestling name? Uh, I have no Sabby, idea. Uh, Miss Tackle is his wrestling oh, name, maybe. <laughs> I remember Savvy Piscatelli. What? I remember, it's no, true. When well, you talk about Donovan Smith in the club, I remember Savvy Piscatelli. They had an away game, right? So I was going out to the club that night. Savvy Piscatelli beat me to the club coming from an away game. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, he didn't beat anybody when he was playing he safety. He beat nobody when he was playing safety. Uh, all right. Where, where was the away game? Where was it? It was local. It wasn't that far. Oh, it was, it was local. Somebody. It was in Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Maybe Jacksonville? Yeah. Oh, Duvall. Duvall oh. County. Got to stay away. Uh, did he leave at halftime? Oh. <laughs> Wow, there you go. Good stuff here by Blake Cable on the sports web. Rays look good so far. Playoffs are in the near future. We agree with yeah. that? Playoffs in the near future? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so, too. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. Yankees and Red Sox can't last forever. I'll say this, man. I, I was... If I have to accredit any team for making me not really watch baseball anymore, it is the Tampa Bay Rays because, you know, 10 years of being a farm team, I just got worn out. Sure. I didn't want to watch it. Every and when you have year. ownership, yeah. an owner that comes out and says, I can't sustain and I can't get enough fan support 
to be a multimillionaire, it draws fans yeah. away. Yeah. Is and, it not? And, and, you know, I'm kind of tired of the, this whole argument that we don't have a fan support. We do. We I've do been here. We, we have the fan the support. The, the right. problem right. is you don't have enough corporate support. That's it. That's the problem. Like, our fans giving them their, their percentage of what they're supposed to give to the race, you know, to the – to well, their and, and financial problems, to their financial success, but in the in the other cities you got 70% corporate, 30% fans. Here you got 70% fans, and then it's the other way for corporate. Right. So well, let's, we need more corporate support. I let's agree. Let's say this too. You know, we of all people should know the Bucks haven't been the most winningest team oh, in a no. very long time. Sure. Yes, but you put Raymond James Stadium in, let's say Clearwater. You're gonna get right. a lot less people at those games. I still think it I split. still yeah. think it's always gonna be a football state, but you know, talking to Mark Ferguson and, and him trying to cultivate Fergs and really give it the fan experience right down the street from yeah. Tropicana, I definitely think there is hope here. You just gotta get it done no, and I don't I, know if it's gonna get done. I, I don't think, know if they wanna get it done. I think this with the whole stadium situation, because to my raise. Yeah, with the raise. <laughs> this is what I think is whether it's the the stadium is here in St. Pete or it's over in Tampa, they just need a ballpark mm -hmm. because of the revenue that's be, going to be generated from the new ballpark. It doesn't matter where the stadium is at. You're going to get the corporate support. You're going to get more more dollars coming in, more sponsorship dollars. You get a new name on the stadium. That's going to bring you know bring you money. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily think that they need. You know, 25, 30,000 fans, they just need the stadium, and that revenue will help them sustain the, the support they need to, con, you know, stay competitive. Right, right. And, and again, you know, getting rid of the 300 section, you, you, you put it down to 25,000, but you take away those cheaper seats, yep. and, and it's just like... You have all this momentum coming into 2019. And keeping it rolling, too. Keeping it rolling. And, and then you, the owner comes out the other day and talks about attendance again. It's just, it's, I would say, it's very frustrating. You guys are Florida bred, right? You guys are all grew up here. I'm from yeah, here. Yeah, I've been I'm here. here. Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah. I'm not. I was bred in this heat. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> if you're bred in this heat, you'd be toast. I, yeah. <laughs> I was born in Anchorage, Alaska, and I lived there when I was 12. So you got I, brothers there? Yeah, they do. Plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and when I lived in a lot of, a lot of other states on the East Coast, one of the first things I said when I moved to this area, I said, why is your baseball stadium in St. Pete? Mm -hmm. Right. I said, I came, I came here from Philadelphia. All their stadiums are in one section. Yeah. I said, why is your why is your baseball stadium 20 miles away? That would be right. ideal. That's the first thing yeah, I said. Why right. is it? I said, okay, uh, Ice Ice Palace, MLA Arena, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's not that far. Yeah, it's not that far. Raymond you James. know, five That's minutes. That's an Uber ride. Yeah. Right down there. Okay, I get that. I said, but your baseball stadium's 20 miles away. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> Legend <laughs> Field, New York Yankees. Yep. If yeah. if it wasn't for the Yankees, they probably would have built. The stadium, the stadium right there, right there. At, that, yeah. at that site. Yeah. But because you got the Yankees, City of Tampa ain't ain't gonna give up their affiliation to the Yankees because they probably giving them a lot of money. Right. So yeah. that's what it that's comes the down problem. to. Like, yep. You, you can't even get your own team, your own, you know, city officials mm -hmm. to get on the team's back because they all over somebody else back. And, and the, the thing with the thing with uh, with Steinbrenner too is, I mean, with all respect to the no, Tampa Peter Tarpons, <laughs> with all respect to the Tampa Tarpons, this is a stadium who. To be honest, doesn't seem like it's busy enough to fill out the whole year. No. You know, I've yeah. gone to my fair share of Tarpons games, and there's maybe 25 people watching that game. Yeah. Like I said, I'm never going to not go and watch a great game of baseball, but to not be that busy in a stadium, especially one owned by the New York Yankees, mm -hmm. everybody comes to town for spring training, but the rest of the year it's pretty much empty. It's empty, yeah. I agree. Yep. Agree. All right. Somebody says, uh, Peter, are you going to OTAs on Tuesday? Not sure about that yet. That's already that time? Uh, yeah, it is, man. What day is it? It oh is. Tuesday. Really? Yeah. What time like, oh, is June. Tuesday? Uh, somebody says you guys need a runner. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you guys need a runner, a mic to lasso the spectators with opinions. We got Tampa Ray <laughs> Kennedy in the back Where there. But there? we love to have him up at the bar because Where he can there? give your take. We don't give you just two minutes. We give you a voice here on the sports web, the evolution. Well, email me. Um, I'm going to put your, your stuff up. Yeah, uh, look, email me too. Yeah. Pblake1003 at yahoo.com. That's a great thing because we can put it uh, in be, the expert program. You can email program. me at uh, candycane32. <laughs>
<laughs> what Kid, now? Kid, I don't even want to know. Oh, uh, well, you Joe? shut <laughs> up and be quiet. You ever seen Joe Rock? No, I never seen. Oh, that. you never seen? No, Joe I gotta Ryan? watch that. Oh, yeah. Kevin Hart and. Uh, no, no, the, it's a horror movie. Joyride. Joyride. Oh, you never seen that? No, I never oh, even heard of it. Come on, man. We're really? Gonna see, we gonna see you in it? No, I'm not gonna be in it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, where the name come from. It's a truck driver. Okay. And you know the one they with kids was playing on the little CV radio, and a truck driver they started communicating with, started stalking them. His name was Candy Cane. Really? Yeah. But then they got him on the go. Because he's sweet? Candy cane. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, good idea. I did that at the Buckstrap party with a mic and a recorder. Got a lot of opinions. And, again, that's what we provide here, a camera. Uh, and, again, some open mics here at the bar live at Ferg's. The dude is wearing the wrong gear. No gator is in my house. Oh, there he is. He can speak. Uh, Rojo is boarding on bust. I don't think he knows uh, the playbook, but I also think it comes down to the fact of it's too early to say Rojo it's is a bust. Yeah. It's too it, way. It's it way too early. early. He ain't he even doing reaction. Down the field. I yeah. Nothing, Rojo. You're in shorts and hell. You You're in shorts and uh, the one, suits. The one thing I loved about Robert Ayers that what he used to say is like, you, you, there's no way you're gonna tell me that we're better wearing shorts and hell. Exactly. Right. There's no exactly. way you're gonna tell me we're better. Well, let me let me ask this real quick. So when it comes to Rojo, I mean. I believe he can get it done, but given the opportunity, do you guys think we'll see that yes. same running back we saw at USC? I think he can if you, uh, you create that space. Of course, you've got to create know, that man. space in the offensive line, and you've got to put him in those situations where he's going to be able to use that speed. If he's got that speed, you know, what, four or five 60-yard plays at USC, create that space. That's what's so great about Arians and Byron Leftwich coming in as an offensive coordinator. Get him out there and see what he can do because if you can get him out in that space, he's electric. What well, Ronald Wookie, Jones? Wookie, is a, Wookie. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I say Ronald Jones is compared to a lot to like Aaron Judge. You're gonna get a home run out of him, a big right. play. Okay. But unlike but unlike Ronald Jones compared to Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge has figured out the game of baseball. Yeah. Ronald Jones has not figured out the game of football. But with that being said, Peter makes great points about uh, Ronald Jones doing a lot of things in a U U USC is because he wasn't asked to do a lot. Sure. But to run. Yeah. Right. This game is a lot more schematic. Toss this week. size is gonna change. Um, so you got to learn how to block before you can run the ball. You got to yeah. learn how to read, blo read plays. You got to know when to cut back. He, he doesn't. I don't think he has that eye vision. They, the best. The long. The long story short, the game hasn't slowed down for him. Yeah, it's still yeah. moving it, a it's thousand moving miles, hour. miles. But yeah. that's a part of coaching. You've got to get a guy ready to read a playbook. You got to put that guy in the situations where he can read succeed. A playbook when he's supposed to read it. Gotta make sure he's on the level. Oh Lord! <laughs> yeah, you got to. At that point, it becomes less about having to remind him, right, and just telling him to do it. Like you've you all heard that story about Jamarcus Russell. Mm -hmm. oh. Coach sent him home. Purple drink. Coach sent him home. He said, here, we oh. got some tape that I need Let you to go home and plays. review. Let us know the Let best, know best plays. plays. He comes back the next day, and I he's like, like oh, yeah, Coach, yeah. I, I ran through it. I'm going uh. to go. There was nothing on <laughs> the tape. On the tape. Uh. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Yeah. They, like, oh. they made sure that, that he was reading the playbook or not reading the playbook. And the great thing about this time. coaching staff, <laughs> but they have so many, what Bruce Arians said that oh really got God. me in that press conference when he was introduced. No. <laughs> was the fact that he's gonna have separate, uh, you know, practice. I like right. that Sessions. aspect where he got right. two fields. That's right. why he got exactly. Yeah. Huge yeah. coaching yeah. style. Lo and behold, yeah. player development with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Amazing concept. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, Absolutely he, he, amazing. I think we ran down all the coaches, the specialty coaches, and everything last last mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. and I was breaking down how practice is going to look. And they're, they're a lot of everybody's going to get a lot of individuals, and they're all going to come together. And then right. once you go all the team breakdown, that's where you run through everything you just practiced. Yeah, right. I'm not sure if, if if Carter was doing that. I don't think they no, did. no. Actually, no. yeah, I was at OTAs. They did not do that. Well, we we was at training camp too, and they, you know, if if they were practicing on field one. Then the kickers would be over on field two, mm -hmm. kicking field goals and punting, and everybody else was just standing around, you know, watching everybody yeah, on field practice, one. Right. Practice. So, so they, weren't nah, they weren't doing that. They weren't doing and, that. And, All right. And that's going to help, especially with uh, especially one on one type stuff, and and uh, being mentally prepared for when you go uh, first team O versus first team D, or excuse me, usually I mean, first that, team O versus second team D. I actually D. like yes. that yeah. because how do you find diamonds in the rough? If you never, if they never get a chance to practice, you you hear this all the time, all around the league. You guys got to give them a chance. Yeah, with guys, they say, well, throughout the week, the ones and the twos get all the reps because 
they have to be prepared to play. But well, what about the other guys? The other guys. They might injury sick. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. They might have to play. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cutter never liked rookie running backs. He said it. He did. Donovan Smith needs to stay out of the club. See Josh He's Freeman. A young man, I ain't gonna tell him Should what to do. Cheetah club. Well, look, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, it can't, if he shows up the work, if it affects has, his the work. if it affects That's, his yeah, play, but if he say. I do if he affects his play on the field, but and if you're gonna be accountable. He's got to come in and work, and if it means, look, you got to give up club time, what's the priority here, gentlemen? Is it to be a starting offense alignment for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or is it out in the club getting lit or whatever the heck it is? Uh, by the way, you get out into the club, and you try to dance to that mumble rap music. Ah! you you, you got to go insane anyway. <laughs> DJ. So just, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> true. Power. It's <laughs> absolutely true. That mumble rap garbage. Clear water absolutely hip hop. Yeah. Sweet Pete the hey. Spider. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man, you crazy guys, you son of yeah. a bitch. Taking one song at a time. Eight legged Pete, got you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, I tell you, talk to those unsigned artists out there, man. They definitely got their music played, and it was far better than that mumble rap you play. So I, stay I, out I, of the I clubs and agree. keep your priorities straight. And, and look, you can do that, you know, when you're winning consistently True. this team Nobody has now then. right he's young he just got a new contract it's time for him to earn that money that's how it is that's how it is in the agree. nfl not for long if you're not playing up to snub so all right let's see here oh how sweet it will be when the bucks play atl this season oh, God. uh cutter said they needed to run the ball more versus washington that. that's why he took over for that game and yet they didn't do any running nope. in that game nope. which made no sense again 501 yards three points Especially against. when you saw how good Todd Munkin was doing. Right. I mean, yep. You know, kind of similar to where we had brought up the sure. situation with Lovey Smith and Dirk Cutters, the offensive coordinator. That promotion made sense to a lot of people, but at the end of the day, we saw it just didn't work out. Right. Cutter's because a, Dirk oh, Cutter is an OC, not That's a head it. coach. That's right? it. So I know towards the end of Dirk Cutter's time here, I had so many people asking me, oh, well, what about, you know, Todd Munkin being considered for the head coach? Ooh, and ooh. I'm like, no. 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 Todd we need a head coach. Great things. He, he really did, and he was probably one of the best offensive coordinators we've had in recent memory, but nah, not as a head coach, man. To add to that, remember the e Philadelphia game was the first time he's ever uh, called yeah. plays in the NFL game. So you yep. want that guy to be your next head coach? Come I, on now. I, it's, it's what have you done for me lately. I think people, it's more than just calling plays in the NFL. Dirk it's Cutter everything. found that out. It's game management situations. Yeah. Handling which the Dirk, players. Right. Attitude. Which he did a terrible job yeah. of. That Jackson. locker room was a mess. Yeah. Because yeah. Helmet on the side. Yes. Dirk Cutter does nothing. Nothing. Nothing I at all. like it was yesterday. Nothing. He threw that helmet. Yep. The Man, I, yep. Nobody I said nothing. One of my biggest yeah. gripes with, you know, Dirk Cutter and controlling the players. I mean, Deshaun Jackson, I think he's... I don't want to say he's the most responsible for, for that piece of it. attitude, but he's a good piece of it. Mm -hmm. I remember we beat San Francisco. We were blowing he, him out. He ran into the locker room immediately. Yep. And he was out. Yep. Like, he wasn't there for any of the post game. He was, he was uh, done. And that's the guy who likes to go party. He got yep. like that's, how, that's how much he cared about the team. Uh, he dropped a touchdown pass yeah, that, that game. Too. Yep. He dropped yeah. one. But he wasn't. He, he, but he's, he's not a leader. leader. Right. No, San Fran game. San Fran game. He's, he's not a leader. One. He's not a leader, though. He dropped it. He's yep. not a leader. Game, so. Man, I don't even want to remember the finish of that one. Over. That was, that was brutal. In Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was, if, if Mike could have got that to him, he scores. That's he does he score. He scores. But Mike yeah. gets a good little toss to him. He walks right in. Yep. Yeah. He does. He walks right in. Yeah. Yeah. And probably the season is different. Yeah. Right. All right. Over, under, unsportsmanlike penalties against Sue. Six. Wow, really? Six? I know where Derek's coming from. If what? we're losing, Sue's going to turn into an animal. Oh, yeah. Well, what's the uh. stat? Wasn't he, like, the most penalized defensive player last year, or defensive lineman, I think? Got to check up on that. Somebody league. says four and a half. Uh, point, Detroit was real bad. Yeah. Tampa yeah, Bay. Yeah, it was bad. It was real bad. Yeah. Tampa Bay, hot muffins, no corporate hot support muffins. from St. Pete for the Rays. Uh, yeah, that's an XFL, XFL <laughs> season. <laughs> yeah. Rays need a stadium in Tampa like USF right. needs a football stadium on campus. Why is your baseball field here? Yankees have a long history in Tampa going back before Babe Ruth, it, but oh, look, yeah, no, we yeah. know that. I get but that, still, but at some the Rays point, are your team, they're they're your major league baseball right. team, and it, it's a I microcosm. To Tampa, I thought the Yankees played there. It's a microcosm <laughs> of the ownership here. Stuart Sternberg is an affirmed New York Mets fan. He's not even here. 
if he were here, if he would endear himself like an owner does for the Tampa Bay Lightning, which would be Jeff Vinnick. Yeah. He's from up north, but what he's done is he's endeared himself. He doesn't alienate the fan base. He cultivates Olympia. that franchise. He's consistent. He brings everything out. The fans respect that. They want a yeah. winner. They got a winner in the Tampa Bay Lightning. Don't tell me that you cannot. There you go. Right there. You, right there. you got Lightning fans right no, there, and no. that tells you everything you need Boston. to know. Tells you everything you need to know about the Tampa Bay yeah. Lightning, that they're a winner. It can work here, but fans have to believe. When you take away that hope of fans believing in a team, when you talk every year about attendance and how bad the fan support is, eventually it's going to rub the fans yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Nobody is going to feel sorry for a multi-million dollar owner when you live in a blue-collar state, which makes $32,000 yeah, a year. season tickets to the Mets, too, now. Right. Don't, if, well, don't forget I said, that. I said earlier, too, you know, going back to being a fan of a bad team, you have to be realistic, but on the same hand, being a fan of a bad team – Hope is really the only thing you got. You know what yeah, I mean? Mm -hmm. If you want to look at it so critically, to where you can never be happy <laughs> with anything this team that. does. No. And I mean, I'm not necessarily talking about anyone in particular on mm -hmm. Twitter. Um, but if you want to break this down and just be yeah. miserable about this team, then sure. you can do that. Sure. But you're going to find yourself just having a terrible time with it. Yeah. Like, That's it. You That's just got to hope. Man. I, I, gotta, I, just, I, I just hope that they can get I, – I know this team can win. I know they've done it. I wish they would spend more money. I've said that before, but even sometimes they don't have to spend money. Nope. You would like to see them make the big other. trades at the deadline to get over the top and show. You would like to see them have a World Series, yeah. but yeah. again, you just don't know if it's going to happen. So you take it for what it is. You enjoy it while you can. It's down here in downtown St. Pete. Get down here and yeah. watch the race. Question, Peter. Yeah. No, I think everybody brought up. Sure. Do you think if Madden was still here, will we be successful? No, I, I I think they would have had the same dull period that they had because I think uh, I, I don't, no, I don't on, know on, about on, that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Ooh, let me let me that, say let me let me <laughs> let me speak now. Let me speak. Okay, uh, all right. Because when Madden left, like all of us, you know, guys that he came up with. Longoria. Where they were starting Everybody. to get old. Oh, they was yeah. aging. Oh, some of them was the leaving. Some of them was trading Asian. away. The, yeah. the minor uh -huh. league system was depleted because. It, Joe Madden got out at the right time and, 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 and went to Chicago. I still, because you know, I remember the two years previous, before he left, we were barely over 500. In right. the last season, we was actually under 500. Right. So I don't think he would have made a difference because you, there had to be a cycle of new talent. You had to recycle the minor leagues. Time. Sure. You had to, you, you, I mean, it's a fair point. You yeah. lose Friedman to the Dodgers, and of course that was one of his best friends. But when it, the optic of the situation is that you let the winningest manager in Tampa Bay Ray history go for one and a half million dollars, he goes to the Chicago Cubs the and World breaks a hundred and nine year curse, wins the World Series, and Tampa Bay Rays fans are going, "What are you doing?" It is just the classic case the of right, a Tampa Bay yeah. sports fan. Yeah, yeah but when would you, you shut at, up? When you look at the Cubs, though, <laughs> they won a Super Bowl. Let's look at the Cubs. Let's look at that Cubs Not the team. Kids. Wow. And when you, when you look at that Cubs team, uh, they was just starting to build. That talent was sure. just starting to come through the minors. So they were going to be – I don't know if they would have won the you know, championship, but they were getting better either way. Right. They were getting better either way. He just – he just came on board. Just like I say, he left the Rays at the right time. Right. He got, he got to the Cubs yeah. at the right time. But the yeah. disappointing thing is, that. fellas, is that this team is in the World Series in 2008. And the, and the upcoming years after that, they have opportunities to make trades to put their team over the top. Instead, they're dealing at, half, at, at the halfway point of the trade deadline. They're not putting their team over the, the, the point. They don't win any World Series with all the talent that they have. And some of that talent... Na A.K.A. David Price, A.K.A. Ben Zobers, go to other teams and win World Series championships. Yeah, yeah. Sure that is. is the disappointing thing with the Tampa Bay Rays. But look, I'm a I'm a Rays fan. I'm, I, 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 nice right, one. right. Uh, but it just never worked out. So you get rid of the get rid of the winningest uh, manager. You get rid of some players that go on to win World Series championships. So there's not much empathy 
from the fan standpoint and not much belief and hope because as a sports fan, you have to have hope. And at the end of the day, if you take that hope away, then you have nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and part of the reason is with baseball is unique because they don't have a salary cap. Right, so, which they need. You right. You know, well, well, we can argue that all day long. All day, we got another at, show at about day, that. Yeah. Part of the reason why, as fans, the other half, we don't have hope is because they don't have a salary cap. Right. And you can't compete with, with the, these the, major the, markets Boston, when it comes down to, you know, getting free agents. If you, wanna, if, if you want a good hitter, you gotta pay a hundred and fifty million dollars for the for the worst of the good hitters. Thank you. So pay the market price. The market is out it's there. Not fair. Do you want to win? Do you want to win, or do you want to save money? Is it about the bottom line with this team, or is it about winning going forward? They've been able to win, but they could have possibly World Series championships. And then you look around, and you have the Marlins, and you have the Diamondbacks. The Marlins have two. The Diamondbacks have one. Consequently, the Marlins have a new stadium. Still can't draw, but they have those two championships that they could basically go to sleep at hey, night with. And talk about ballparks. Yeah. You brought up the Marlins. Yes. They got a ballpark. Yeah, but it's not in a great area. Yeah, but and they, they have it, a yeah, club. And you, hey, hey, it and you would nice. never hear them talk about the Marlins ever moving again because they got the ballpark. Right. On the taxpayers' backs. Yeah, they did it crooked, but Oh yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Don't leave that don't leave that out there. They did it crooked. Yeah. Exactly. They so They did do it crooked, but they got it. Yeah, they got it. So we'll see if that situation in the claw. works yeah. out for the race going forward here. Man, I'm trying to um, figure out why I got this flower filter on here. I can't get it to turn oh, it off. Let me get out of Oh man, I don't know what that's all about. All right, uh, hey there, Candy Cane creepy go. movie recommend it. <laughs> Highly uh Arians uh Fire the DJ from practice. Can't concentrate if you're dancing on the sideline. Arians took the ping pong table away as well. Again, a tone setter. Your team that has not had a playoff appearance since 2008. You have to turn it around. Two consecutive 5-11 and 11 seasons. Why not do it? Yeah, and this thing, too, is like I don't want to be the guy to say this is a team that hasn't won, so they can't have any fun at all. I'm yeah, not I'll saying just, that. He, he, he but you got to earn stuff say, like yeah. that. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Enough. Countless yeah. times we have lost a game, and there's a guy in the locker room saying, oh, we didn't execute. We didn't go out there and do what we needed to do. And in the background, you hear him goofing off playing ping pong. Sure. You know what I mean? There's a lot of luxuries that I think this team had that, makes a difference when it comes to showing up to practice every day. Yeah. You know, having having music and OTAs is one thing, but if you're a team that just can't get it done, what's the point? Earn yeah. that stuff. Yeah. You know? Agree. Agree. Yeah. Absolutely like my agree. daughter. You know, when she's not acting I'm, I'm right, gonna, I take it from her. I'm going to miss the music, though. <laughs> wow. Because those playlists they had, they were pretty <laughs> no banging TV, every year. No TV. No phone. No computer. I don't believe no, that. No, 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 I, no. I, think, I think she swindles you. That's no. what I think. I think you're a big teddy bear over there in the no. corner. No. I do. He said no. No. He said no? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, the Rays got an absentee owner, and weren't the Rays a big deal when Madden was here? Uh, that wasn't that long ago. More recent, the last good season the Bucks have had. Up, Madden. That's why it was a good subject to bring up. Right, right. absolutely. You know, look, Madden yeah. is a polarizing subject. Sure. If you bring, you say Joe Madden's name, and you could talk for hours just about you know Joe Madden and what could have been his success he with was the one Rays. Of the first people I met when sure. I moved here. There's two people I met when I first moved to town. This guy here's like Let's he's show a, the coolers. He must. Just, this is a ball. This is a player right here, man. Not me. I, I know everybody. Lucky. I got I this got person. Lucky. Hey, I could give. I could call Miko. Hey, who you want me to call? <laughs> oh, I, got, I got everybody phone numbers in. Just open the phone up. Uh, Roll she, it down. You know what? Roll it down. Roll it down. Roll it down. Roll it down. <laughs> You're talking about Miko Grimes, right? She she blocked me too, man. Oh wow, hey, man. We uh, right, she man. had actually she posted something. It was she it was picked up married men's wives. I see. <laughs> so you got you got she blocked had, by her too. She had posted something and she said she said I have got five hundred dollars through Cash App for anyone that can find me the three plays that Brent Grimes got beat in Tampa. I found those three plays. And she gave you 500? No. And they oh, gave you wow. She blocked you. Blocked. The block. she, she gave you the block. She liked it, and then she blocked it. Yeah. Just like Gerald McCoy's ah. wife. <laughs> she was sending them out left and right because I wasn't the only one. Hey, I had some other buddies, did, too. Did you put the play in that last season? Uh, I, I can't remember what game it was, but. He had an opportunity to make a tackle on the sideline, oh, and he just uh, cut, he just ran out of bounds. It, it, did you y'all remember that play? Yes, yes, yes. Oh yes. man, yes. He melted in. 
Yeah, so let's get Tampa Ray Kennedy in here, too, because, oh, you're not going to get in here? No, okay. All right, He's we'll read one more comment, and then that's it. I heard reports of the defense looking good. Uh, should that be a cause of concern for the offensive line? There are shorts uh, and a T-shirt. I got yeah, nothing to say. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> I got nothing to say. You, you've said it best. You know, we can hear about Ronald Jones. At the end of the day, he's probably the most talked about guy out of OTAs. But like you said, man, it's so hard to gauge what these guys are good at when they're not in pads. Yeah. Because it's a different game when you've got pads on, especially in Tampa. Oh, the heat? Yeah. yeah. The heat is brutal. Brutal. So speaking of the heat, I'll tell you what, let's get everybody's final thoughts. Derek Jones, go ahead. Well, I gotta go first. <laughs> I don't. I, go, go, man. I, I gotta go. think. Go ahead, Blake. <laughs> yes. I don't like being put on the spot either. Don't worry. You don't, you don't like it. I wasn't ready for well, that. I wasn't ready. Do on the sports web. <laughs> That's how we do it here. Final yes. thoughts. Uh, yeah, they always gotta have hope here, even even when it doesn't look good. Like I said, we gotta be optimistic with the Bucks, with the Rays. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to them. They. <laughs> I, I, they couldn't have done any better. They literally continued success from last season to this season. It's really no reason not to like them right now. Yeah, and right. we and we right. definitely right. got to get down here for a Rays watch yeah. party. I haven't been yet. Sports web we style. Well, let's do it. Let's get you out there, Rhett. Yep. So, I mean, looking at this Bucks team, man, it's I, I've got a good feeling about it. I, I really do. I think BA is going to ultimately do more good than harm, and yep. people seem to forget that this is Bruce Arians we're talking about. The same Bruce Arians that made Ben Roethlisberger, Andrew Luck, Peyton code, Manning, yep. all these guys what they are today. Yeah. And do I think he's going to turn Jameis Winston around 100%? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's going to be on Jameis. But, you know, we just have to, we have to be excited about what this team is putting on the field because it's going to be different. But at the end of the day, we got to support who's on our team. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to argue about Gerald McCoy and Indomitian Sue, and that's fine and dandy, but... Gerald McCoy doesn't play here anymore. Nope. These are the same people that want to say we should have drafted Derwin James. Yep. You know, <laughs> at, at the end of the when day, the last, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, Derwin James doesn't play here. Yeah. So we got to support our guys and, and we got to get excited about what they bring to the field. But I'm feeling good. All right, Tampa Ray Kennedy, go ahead. He wants to get in there. I got this one. Okay. In case go this ahead. Mic's not working. So all right, I there we go. Tell you all right now, <laughs> since I'm the oldest son of a gun up here. There's 40 acres of property across the street. We're in the city of St. Petersburg where property condos are now going for a million to pop, okay? It's a burgeoning area. The property buyers are going crazy. Now, if you honestly think that building a 40,000 seat stadium in East Tampa is gonna get the rednecks from Lakeland over here and fill that stadium, oh, man. then go for it, Whoa. then go for it. I'm not, I'm just, wow. but I'm telling you, I'm telling from? you, Whoa. from a land development standpoint, you give Stu Sternberg and the boys development rights for the redevelopment of those 40 acres. We build a parking garage and let them build some condos and stores around it. Economically, it makes sense. Now, does it put more butts in the seat? I don't know. You gotta make it more popular and wanna be there. I say. A smaller stadium that can accommodate concerts and can also fit in because the city is and guys do we agree all of you not at once is st petersburg versioning here yes yeah. it's, a, it's nice oh, it's, crazy, it's right? a nice area, area. yes there's nothing but bars and strip and, 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 and a long strip down you look yeah, down, street. Right you look now, down the street they got high rises going up yeah. almost yearly now they just keep building you've them. gone to keep a bucks game them. on a sunday morning when there's no traffic and mm -hmm. you got log jam right yeah mm -hmm. try going to a baseball game at 5 30 p.m on a wednesday Let's see how far you Oh, I'm not going. I'm not going. Close to the interstate. I'm not right. going, dude. <laughs> All right, that was my I'll be on my bike. All right, good stuff, Tampa Ray Kennedy. <laughs> and I'll get to the stadium before somebody's driving a car. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> and I'm in St. Pete. And don't that's even, where the stadium don't even being have to in pay Tampa. For parking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. They might charge me. Let's wrap charge. it up here. Thanks to Sam Ash Music and Clearwater. Thanks to Ultimate Logo and Dunning. And definitely tell them the sports web sent you. For Derek Jones, Blake Cabell, uh, Tampa Ray Kennedy, Rhett Matthew, and yours truly, Peter Blake. We're on the sports web, the evolution of sports talk television on Bucks Report, BucksReport.com. Everybody together, giving you something to, to think, think about. about. See you later.